Have you ever wondered if the skills that got us to where we are today might not be the same skills needed to solve the world's most pressing problems? This is the Levers of Exchange podcast, where we exchange ideas, knowledge, and best practices for achieving a sustainable future. I'm your host, Jimmy Gia. For those who have been listening to Season 3, you know that we interviewed six practitioners who work deeply at the intersection of large systems. What are the skills necessary to thrive at those intersections? Season 3 is brought to you by a generous grant from the Skoll Center for Social Entrepreneurship at the Said Business School, Oxford University. If you're new to this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe. And now, here's a compilation of what each guest considered to be their superpower. I think it's perhaps being able to see things and make links at different levels, both the micro and the macro. So to be able to step back and and have some some sense of this is how our broader society and system works and to see the historical context, to see the cultural influences, to see the design of policy, again, not extensively, but to have a sense of here's the broader economic, social fabric system that we're living in. And here's perhaps ideas I have of how that needs to change or be influenced. And maybe if we did economics in this way and embrace this, so some sense of that broader system, whilst also being able to hone in and go, so what does that mean for, for me as an individual? How do I make that practical? If we want to create a well-being economy or a dot economy or this different economic system that really puts the well-being of people and nature at the core so that we can all thrive, what does that mean for the kind of person I need to be, for the way I need to lead, for the way I might work with my team, and how can this little piece contribute to this big, this bigger change and, and kind of drawing those connections. And I find often it's easy to, to be in one or the other, but that ability to to make those connections, I think, gives our little efforts a sense of purpose and helps us connect with the other initiatives we need to, to support the wider change. That was Sharuthi Vijaya Kumar, a global shaper at the World Economic Forum and co-founder of the Emerge Institute. She points out that making sense of the cultural systems means understanding the historical context and how one fits into the social fabric. For Stuart Hillen, a portfolio developer at Energy Australia. As an engineer, he found his calling using his problem-solving skills to understanding how things work and how things are made. I think engineering is one of those great degrees around a lot of people that done engineering as well may not have actually gone into engineering like me. I went into strategy consulting at Deloitte straight after engineering. And, and so I sort of felt like a bit of a fraud, you know, was I really an engineer? But I think it's a way of thinking and it teaches you a certain skill set around problem solving and around analytics and around not being sort of intimidated by a concept. I think if you sort of research something enough and try and try and understand a particular problem, engineering teaches you that you should be able to get to the bottom of something or get to the bottom of a problem and, and approach it with the skills that you learn through the degree. So I think there's sort of a way of thinking from an engineering degree that is that is really helpful. And I think sort of an appreciation of the complexity of, you know, actually building things. I think sometimes if you're, say, in the in the finance world or in the tech world or in um, not sort of so much at the coalface of design of, of things, you might think that construction or designing something might be really simple and trivialized. But I think if you studied, you know, engineering, then you realize that you know, infrastructure can be really, really complex and there's there's a lot that goes into it. And I think appreciating that, certainly in my current role, for example, I do project development now and appreciating that good design takes time, risks are important, safety is important, and you need to think about these things to make sure that a, an asset, if it's going to last 30 or 40 years, is sort of well thought through and there is good engineering that sits behind it. Another trained engineer, Joaquin Viquez, who works for the German development agency GIZ, he attributed his skills to a sense of knowing what's missing rather than noticing what was there. I think something that I have found very valuable as a, in my personal side or my, or my ability not to losing the, my way in the sense of keeping in the core, what is it that drives us in this project, right? So it's like a cleaner Caribbean. And so just having that like impact side of things very present helps me 
think of when I'm talking to a country, really becoming that advisor that it's focused on this issue and not in opposition. If I were to think about only, you know, what would look good for my resume, what would look good for the for the organization, or what would look good for for IDB in this case, then I think the project could be steered very differently. So if I were to say my biggest asset is just being passionate about what the problem is, obviously having that combo of experience from you know agriculture side of things because this pro- this project actually is looking also into implementation of i want to say innovative circular economy solutions for example reuse of effluent for agriculture and so having that combo of like looking at that whole value chain of things of, from my agriculture knowledge from my bachelor's wastewater from my master's and now with the mba sort of this project management of things putting all that into combo and keeping that core goal in mind is the the biggest thing I bring to the team. For all of us who work at the intersection of systems, it's communication that is the ultimate skill. And communication comes in many forms. For James Mitchell, a principal at the Rocky Mountain Institute, the stakeholder engagements he had to do in the maritime sector required a lot of listening in order to get the Poseidon principles launched. Well, so firstly, I have to credit everyone else, right? I certainly played a role in making this happen, but there were, everyone had a, had a very, very important role to play. Yes, so I, I think I was the voice that understood kind of all sides. So I, I understood the needs, <laughs> the legitimate needs to maintain profitability, you know, both, both in finance and industry, but also in deeply aware and care deeply about climate mitigation. So I think I was able to kind of sit in the middle and find that that sort of leading edge of, of what's possible or that kind of, I guess, kind of the art of figuring out what's possible. I, I think, honestly, my, my sort of superpower skill there maybe was just listening, you know, being willing to put in the, put in the time to find the solution given, given the views we had at the time. Natalia Pranishnaya, who spent many years at the GSMA Foundation, found new products and applications for how the telecom sector could alleviate poverty and improve agriculture businesses in sub-Saharan Africa. She pointed out the importance of articulating messages in the language and the jargon of whomever she was talking to. Strategic skills is something that allows me to see a few steps ahead and beyond that being able to transmit that strategic idea or a concept in a clear articulation to my team and my partners and the funders, those two together are essential. So when you say communicate, transmit to the different partners that you work with, how complex was this interconnected web that you had to work within? I think it is very, because it's a different, it's different spaces. People think very differently. People in healthcare think one way, people in telcos think completely different way, energy providers think on different level and the KPIs on the like energy efficiency as opposed to climate. So you have to find a common narrative, but very often you have to bring the people at the same table, kind of drop this common narrative and make them talk to each other. I think it's also about this facilitation skills. But very often we would create the same business case just for different audiences, it would be even different publications. You have to speak appealing to their problems, and for that you first need to listen and understand what their problems are. Just being a mediator or being in the middle is a very interesting task, but if if they start understanding each other, this is where real innovation can happen, because innovation happens in this intersection between different industries. Finally, Jeremy McDaniels credited facilitation skills at bringing people together across many sectors. Now, as the Senior Advisor for Sustainable Finance at the Institute of International Finance, he interacts with global actors across 400 institutions and tries to strive for consensus. I would say the uh, the capacity to work with a wide range of different stakeholders and orient them towards a common goal and deliver evidence-based research and analysis, analysis to, to substantiate 
the collective action of different groups of, of stakeholders. And so this has been applied in the policy sphere, working with central banks and supervisors, in the private sector, working with executives at banks and insurance companies. And that was a skill that really came out of many aspects of my education at, at Oxford and also working at Oxford after I graduated for, for some time. And I think that Looking forward, it's widely recognized that multi-stakeholder collaboration is going to be critical to solving the climate challenge. It's something which is transboundary, cross-sectoral. The more that we can think about how to build up groups of like-minded people that want to do catalytic work, the more likely we are to be able to address this very challenging global risk that we face. I'm, I'm really grateful for having the opportunity to build that skill and, and, and learn from, from those that are, are very proficient at it. So there you have it. It's the art of figuring out what's possible. Some of it is curiosity-driven. Some of it is breaking down big problems into its constituent parts. But time and again, we heard just how important it is to translate between stakeholders, the jargons, the expectations, and the underlying mentalities. Hopefully this episode gives you an idea of what skills you have and what you can develop for future success. Thanks again for listening. This is the Lovers of Exchange podcast, and I'm the host, Jimmy Gia. The music is by Sean Hart. Thanks again to the Skoll Center for Social Entrepreneurship at the Said Business School, Oxford University, for sponsoring season three of this podcast please visit our website at www.leversofexchange.com for additional episodes, books, and other resources. Thank you again, and remember, the clean tech economy will require everyone's participation. So how can we exchange ideas today to help find your role tomorrow? Mm-hmm.